Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're gonna to be diving into Premiere Pro 2024, and I'm gonna be walking you through exactly how I color grade my clips. We're gonna be taking this clip today from this to this, just like that. So without further ado, and without wasting any more time, let's dive into Premiere Pro, and let's get this video started. All right, so here we are inside of Premiere Pro, and this obviously is the clip we are working with. We are high up in the mountains in this clip, and we are also in the color workspace. So if your Premiere Pro isn't looking like this right now, just make sure you might be in editing or assembly. Make sure once you've opened it, you're heading over to color, you've drag and drop your clip in here, and we're good to go. Now this was shot on the Canon R6 in C-Log3. It was actually shot about a year ago. I love this clip, super nice location. So usually if you're shooting in log, chances are you might be using a conversion light. This isn't something that I'm going to be doing. A conversion light just gets you to a point where your footage looks somewhat good again and not super flat anymore, but I'm gonna be walking you through exactly how I color grade my footage from scratch because I don't use conversion LUTs. I use my own LUTs, which you can check out linked in the description. You can use this little discount code at checkout for a discount, but today we're not gonna be doing that because that wouldn't be much of a tutorial. So let's dive into color grading this log footage from absolute scratch. We're first gonna start off in the basic correction and the first thing that we do is we're gonna be dropping these shadows. This just adds a lot more contrast back into our shot. I'm also gonna make sure, and you should make sure as well, that your computer screen is maxed out on brightness to make sure you're getting exactly what you're doing to your footage. Okay, next up, we're gonna be increasing these highlights. This was a little bit of a strange shot purely because we're shooting directly into the sun and Amanda is very, like in the shadow here, if you will. But instead of kind of trying to save these highlights, what we're gonna do is lean into these highlights even more. This brightens up Amanda, and then it also doesn't make it look like we've tried to over-process this shot by trying to save those highlights. Because for example, if we were pulling down these highlights, not ideal. Let's just let that sky go and things look a lot nicer. So we might not max this out to 100, but that there is looking solid. Also something that you should always be doing on all your clips, great idea, especially for when you are color grading, is to make sure you have your Lumetri scopes open. Your Lumetri scopes might not look exactly like mine, and if they don't, all you have to do is right click here, and then we can go to histogram, oh, and we can right click here, we can turn the vector scope off, and I much prefer doing everything in waveform. This just shows you exactly a, a full, complete readout of everything in your image. So as you can see here, if anything is touching zero, it's clipping. If anything's touching 100, it's clipping. And that means on, a, on the 100 scale, it's too bright and it's just white. And on the, on the zero scale, it's too dark and it's just black. It's completely black. So there's no information in there whatsoever. So as you can see, we do have quite a lot hitting 100, which is just up here in this corner. But like I said, we're leaning into that. And the idea with your waveform is you wanna get it spread out a decent amount purely to just give your image a solid amount of contrast. So what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna increase our contrast just a little bit. And as you can see, that really starts to separate things on that scale. If we drag this back, it starts to pinch it in a little bit. And obviously this just looks like log again. So we're gonna increase our contrast just a little bit like that. And then we're also gonna come into tint because I'm seeing a little bit of a green hue in the background. We're just gonna increase this tint just ever so slightly. That kind of removes that that green tint. And then I'm also just going to increase the warmth a little bit, nothing too crazy. Now, of course, like I say, in every single one of my color grading videos, this is something super crucial to do all the time is just check your progress. So you can do this by clicking the little effects button right here. So this is before, this is after, things are already looking super nice. We're gonna close the basic correction tab here. We're gonna skip over creative where we'd usually add our LUT, and then we're gonna get into curves. Now, because we're still not really bottoming out here whatsoever, we're not even close to bottoming out, I'm gonna jump in into my RGB curve here, and we're just going to be putting a point on the shadows, a point on the midtones, and a point on the highlights. We're gonna be dropping the shadows, and we can start to see the bottom part of the waveform really start to drop. And then we're going to be increasing our midtones, and we're gonna also be increasing our highlights just like that. We're really pushing this quite far here. We're gonna come in here, maybe not drop this as much, and then we're just gonna be able to tick this off and back on. Things were looking very nice here, as you can see. We're getting a little bit more of that yellowish hue, that kind of greenish hue in the background. But I promise in the hue versus saturation side of town, we're gonna to be able to correct this. But for now, I'm actually gonna be closing curves. I'm gonna be right clicking over here and I'm gonna be putting a vector scope on and then I'm gonna be removing waveform. I'm then gonna come into effect controls. We're gonna zoom in to about 200% and we are going to be drawing a little kind of uh, little opacity box around here, around Amanda here. Oh, this is on the metric color. We don't want it there. We want it on opacity. We're gonna be drawing 
a little box around Amanda's skin. Of course, this isn't what it looked like. This is what it looked like before, which is far from ideal. This is our current grade. So as you can see, my white balance was a little bit off. We're gonna come over to Lemetri scopes and then we're gonna open up curves. Actually, we might also do this in basic correction as well. So you might be thinking to yourself, Zach, what the hell are you doing? You can't really color grade a clip like this. Well, this is gonna make sure our skin tones are nailed. So this little weird line here is our current skin tone. And this solid line here is the accurate skin tone line. I have no idea how this was set, but my goodness, it looks good every time you get this line matched up with this line. So for example, let's say I made this a little bit more red. You can see we're starting to now move that skin tone line over here. Now, of course, this doesn't look good. So I'm gonna Command Z that. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna slightly increase the purples in the shot just a little bit. We're gonna come down to curves here. And then we are going to do hue versus hue. We're gonna click a little dropper there. And now we can move this around a little bit more. And as you can see on the left-hand side on our vector scope, we are getting that weird line closer to the solid line as we just move this up ever so slightly. We might just expand this a little bit so we're not just making a small selection. And just like that, we've actually gone a little bit too far, believe it or not. We can pull this down just a touch. And this way, if your screen isn't 100% calibrated, you're not editing on one of the new Macs or whatever, this way you can make sure your skin tones are perfect. So we're gonna head back into effects control here, effect controls, I should say. I'm gonna delete that mask. We are also going to zoom out just a touch. Now, as you can see, in my opinion, this is just a little bit too red and it probably is in your eyes too. So what we can do is we're just gonna draw up this a little bit. And now in my opinion, this is the perfect skin tone. We can turn this off and where things are a little bit too yellow and green, a little bit back on and now things are looking great. Now I do think they're a little bit oversaturated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to hue versus saturation and we're just gonna drop the reds and oranges here, which kind of cleans things up just a little bit. I'm gonna come back to Lumetri scopes. As you can see, we do have a lot of orange and warm tones in this image to start with, which always makes color grading skin tones a little bit harder, but that's okay. We're gonna be able to make this clip bang. Okay, so we're gonna put waveform back on and we're gonna turn our vector scope back off. So this is actually quite a solid grade. If we turn this off and back on, I think things are looking quite good, but we are definitely not done. So if we desaturate any more of these oranges to kind of clean up this area of the shot, we're just gonna be ruining the skin tone and I'm happy with the curves and the contrast we've got. So we're gonna close curves and then we're gonna dive into color wheels and match. The first thing I wanna do, the absolute first thing I wanna do is put blues into the highlights. And this is gonna help Amanda pop from the background. If we turn this off, there's a lot of warm light coming in. I wanna turn that to blue light, a little bit harsher. So this is just adding that blue light and then the orange from Amanda's skin tone and the blue light in the background, it's not even blue, it's now just more of a neutral tone, really, really helps that contrast. So we can just add a little bit more. We're gonna move this over to a bit more of a darker blue instead of the teal. And just like that, we are now popping like no tomorrow. And that's pretty much all I wanna be doing here. I'm happy with the skin tones. We don't need to play with the HSL secondary stuff. The vignette, we're gonna be adding a little bit more of a custom one a little later on, but I'm just gonna drop that a little bit. So if we look at before and after, we've already made incredible progress. Something I am noticing just a touch, just ever so slightly is there's probably a little bit of a purple hue in the light up here. We can change that. Actually, we're gonna do that with masking in just a moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to effect controls. We're gonna close this Lumetri color, which is our base grade, boom and boom. And then we're gonna add a Lumetri color effect. And this is where we start to mask. We're gonna add quite a few masks. All we're gonna do is come here and press the little oval. And then I'm going to put this mask over this area right here. I'm gonna increase the feather quite substantially and increase the expansion. We can move this down just like that. And then we're gonna come in here. We're just gonna drop the temperature a little bit. We're gonna drop the shadows to make it a little bit darker. Might have to drop that exposure as well. And then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna be able to desaturate our oranges. And this way I'm not affecting the skin tone whatsoever. And this to me still looks incredibly natural. So now just adding that one little mask, boom to boom, I think things are looking fairly nice. We might just back this off a little bit so we're not really getting much of that valley in there. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna be adding another Lumetri color effect. We're gonna be doing another oval and then we're gonna be fixing the little purple hue up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this bigger, we're gonna increase the feather, we're gonna increase the expansion, but we don't wanna be touching Amanda's face whatsoever. We can play back this clip, no, we're good, we're good. Cool, the mask never touches. And then we're just gonna come to basic correction. We're just gonna add a little bit of green in there. 
just, just a touch, not too much. And then we're gonna also be adding oh, a little bit of blue in there by dropping the temperature. Okay, super close to being done now. We're gonna add another Lumetri color effect. We are going to drag this out around the entire shot, probably just like that. We're then gonna increase the feather as per usual, increase the expansion just a little bit. And then we're also going to invert it. So instead of selecting inside, we're now selecting outside. And then I'm gonna to come to shadows, we're gonna just back these off a little bit. We're gonna desaturate as well. We're gonna come into curves. We're gonna desaturate all the yellows up to the blues. And this is gonna include the greens. I wanna make sure none of these are in the shot. That's probably a little bit excessive. We're gonna just do a little curve here as well. Just like that. We don't wanna be affecting the highlights too much, which is why I bought the midtones back up. And then I would say this clip is pretty much good to go. I'm happy with that. This corner might be a little bit dark. So what we might do is we, oh, okay, it's all happening. It's all happening. Back to effect controls. We wanna click on this clip here, boom. Okay, back to here. We might just back off this vignette, which has helped a little bit, but I do like the way it kind of cleans up here. So instead we can just add another Lumetri color effect, make it an oval right here. We're gonna have to increase it just a touch, do feather, do expansion a little bit, and then we can just increase our exposure a little bit, which is going to, well, maybe not even exposure, maybe shadows, there we go. Nothing too crazy. And there we are, that is our clip color graded. So since we have a load of Lumetri color effects on here, we're gonna have to turn all of these off manually. This is our base grade, we got it to here, and then slowly but surely, we just added a little bit of masks a few masks, I should say, a little bit of masking, if you will. And now we are at our end result. So guys, that pretty much wraps up today's video. I hope you were able to learn a load about my color grading process. And hopefully you've been able to pick up a few little tips and tricks to help out your color grading process as well. But don't get me wrong, I have thought about switching over to DaVinci, but I actually love Lumetri color and the way that it works. Maybe one day I'll be over there and maybe one day we'll be making DaVinci color grading videos together. But for now, in 2024, we're gonna be rocking Premiere Pro. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.